In this lesson of dynamics, we will be discussing on the idea of uh, inertia. These are the learner's outcome. Okay, can you explain the following video examples by applying Newton's first law? Okay, this is a person going to load some, uh, loading some tr shopping trolleys on the truck and the truck drives off. Here you notice that the trolley falls off the truck. The next one is a person riding a bicycle and suddenly breaks his front brakes. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So, a concept that is based on Newton's first law of motion is that and ob all objects tend to stick to its original motion unless there's an unbalanced uh, net force acting on them. This concept of matters reluctant to change its motion is known as inertia. So, if there's no net force on an object, stationary, stationary object would want to remain stationary. So, the shopping trolleys want to stay at their original position when the truck dries off, thus they fall out of their truck because the door was not closed. The moving object wants to keep on moving at the same speed at the same direction. And the person on the bike is already moving when he he breaks his bike, bicycle. His own body was try still trying to maintain his own original speed while his bicycle has already slowed down. This caused him to fall ahead of his bicycle. Some other examples. Notice that this person is going to swipe and take off the ring and see what, see what happens to the marker. Okay, this is slow motion video. Okay, you notice that the marker actually uh, did not move sideways. Instead, it will just fall straight through. Okay, this is another example. The truck driver is trying to unload the uh, bamboo sticks okay, without uh, using any help, but with the help of his own truck. So you notice that uh, both are using the idea of the inertia okay, and uh, to make use of the object trying to remain its, uh, at its own motion. Okay, whether is it if it's stationary, it will try to remain stationary or if the mo object is moving, it will try to keep on moving. Okay, so right now we will use the video tracker to help us to see how moving objects tend to move their, at their own speed or maintain their speed and direction. Okay, this particular uh, video is showing is a crash test. So you find that uh, this is a, a crash dummy child who is not strapped onto his seatbelt and the car crashes into a, a barrier. Okay, let's see what will happen. Okay, as you can see, the child flies off the seat and crashes into the front. So, notice that the uh, coming back to the front of the video, okay, the red dot actually tracks the child's head, the blue dot tracks the car. So, if you can look at the graph that's over here, um, initially the speed of the child and the speed of the car is the same. Okay, but of course when the car gradually stops or crashes in the vehicle and stops, you find that the child still moves at the same speed. Okay, if you recall from your kinematics, uh the if you have the same gradient, you know, 
velocity, sorry, uh, in a displacement time graph, you're actually traveling at the same speed. So throughout this motion, what happens is that, okay, this slow motion, the child is actually moving at the original speed, even though the car has already stopped. Okay, as you can see, the child is still moving at the same speed. Of course, this is in a slow motion. So this is why it's important for you to wear your seatbelts on your car. If there's car accident, this will prevent you from moving at the original speed and crash into the windscreen. So all objects will tend to stick its original motion unless there's an unbalanced net force on it. But however, the mass of the object would actually determine how hard it will resist a change in the state of rest or motion of the body. For example, if a heavy truck and a small motorcycle are both stationary at a traffic stop, when the traffic light turns green, assuming that both vehicles have the same starting force, which vehicle will most probably go ahead faster? It will be the small motorbike. What about the following situation? Both truck and motorcycle is actually right now traveling at the same velocity and suddenly a rabbit dash out some distance in front of them and of course we will not want to hurt the rabbit so they stop. Okay, so we try to stop. If both vehicles had the same braking force, which vehicle would be likely to be able to stop in time? The answer is still a small motorbike. Okay. Uh, some students may have the misconception to think that if the big truck is harder to start moving, then it must mean that it is oh, it's easier to stop it from uh, to stop it moving. Okay, but this is actually a misconception. Okay, another way to is just imagine that which is easier for Superman to stop to save the rabbit. Is it the small uh, uh, speeding big truck or a small motorcycle? And obviously, I think it's easier to stop the motorcycle than the speeding big truck. So the two above scenario generally describe the idea that the amount of mass of an object determines how an object would resist a change in the state of rest or motion of the body. How is that so? A heavy truck when stationary takes a lot of effort to get it to start moving. But once but however, once the heavy truck starts to move, it is also difficult to get it to stop, slow down and stop. Okay, a light uh, motorcycle is easier to get it to moving compared to the truck. But similarly, it is also easier to slow it and stop it if the motorcycle is really moving. So generally, the idea is that the harder it is to move, the harder it is to stop. Or likewise, the easier it is to move, the easier it is to stop. It is because moving and stopping are both changing the motion of the object. So we want to be a bit more specific to determine but what do you mean by change the motion of an object? It means that we are trying to change its velocity. Because stationary, if you want to stop from stationary to moving, it is means that speeding up. If you want to move from moving to stop it to become stationary, it is actually slowing down. So it's actually change both situations is actually changing its velocity. Uh, changing velocity means that it is the magnitude of the acceleration. And high acceleration means that we in you can increase the velocity from zero to a high value within one second, or you can decrease velocity from a high value to zero in within one second. Likewise, low acceleration means that if you increase the velocity to zero to just a low value in one second, or you decrease the velocity to a low value to from a low value to a zero in within one second. Okay, uh, diagrammatically, okay, you can use your Newton second law to help you. If you have a big mass, acceleration would be small. Okay, so it you find that it's very difficult for you to change its uh, velocity if you have a small acceleration or if you have a small mass likewise your acceleration will be big so it means that uh, you can easily change the velocity of a small object so what I mean is that if object have the same braking uh, driving or braking force the mass will determine how difficult to change its motion or change its acceleration okay big mass means small acceleration 
so it's very difficult to change its velocity and small mass means that it's high acceleration it's easier to change its uh, velocity okay another category of changing motion is actually changing the direction of the object and changing the direction of the object means uh, it's changing its velocity because velocity has both magnitude and direction if you change the direction you have changed the velocity too and the general concept still applies the bigger the mass the more difficult for the object to change its direction okay a small rabbit is generally more nimble than a huge elephant okay you can remember it through this way okay these are the YouTube video that I use